Hello guys, welcome back to another topical video by the Zoning GID CSC Biology. Today we are gonna enter a new chapter, chapter 10, which is diseases and immunity. Okay. We are gonna go through about what is pathogens. Okay, so it's basically a microorganism that can cause disease or it can be disease causing organisms anyway. And then we have a transmissible diseases, which where a pathogen can be transformed from one person to another. Okay, in other words, we have direct contact and indirect content. So Direct contact refers to the transmission of microorganisms directly from one individual to another by one or more of the following means droplet contact, coughing or sneezing on another individual, or direct physical contact, touching an infected individual, or including sexual contact. Okay? And for indirect contact and transmission occurs when there is no direct human to human contact which it can be through droplets, food, or water. So this is just a schematic diagram showing how does the transmission route is being transferred from one host to another. Okay? Have a look for a while. Okay, before I move on, there are a few types of direct contact and indirect contact. So which is blood for direct contact, body fluids, touching or kissing are considered direct contact. For indirect contact, it can be contaminated surfaces, droplet infection or food from animals. Okay, there are two types of defenses in our bodies, which are the mechanical barriers and the chemical barriers. Some examples from the mechanical barriers would be the nostrils hairs, which helps to trap dust, the skin keratin, which is hard to penetrate. Okay, it can be skin and nose hair for mechanical barriers. And for chemical barriers, it's where the sticky mucus traps pathogens in the respiratory and alimentary canal lining. The HCL stomach kills the pathogens. Okay. So if these barriers are permeated deep, they are destroyed by white blood cells through phagocytosis or antibodies. So technically, there are three types of defenses, which are the mechanical barriers, the chemical barriers, and cells. Cells which are like phagocytosis and antibody production. Okay. So food hygiene versus personal hygiene. So food hygiene, very simple, common sense that you do not keep food in room temperature for too long keep bacteria and virus away from food and keep animals away from food also and keep raw meat away from food. And then for personal hygiene is where you wash your skin with soap, washing hair with shampoo and have a good oral hygiene. Okay. So how temperature affects bacteria? So we're kind of recapping back in enzymes, all right? So this is a thermometer. Okay, from a freezer temperature, the bacteria does not die, but it's inactive because remember, the bacteria can only survive in room temperatures. All right, so room temperatures is between 20 degrees to 37 degrees, which are living conditions for bacteria. Okay, so most growing bacteria grow well between 10 degrees to 48 degrees. It's just roughly the range of a room temperature scale. Whatever above that, like boiling water or a pressure cooker, which is above 100 degrees, bacteria are killed immediately because due to high temperatures. All right. Okay, this is um, waste disposal or we call it as sewage treatment. Okay, why is this part of disease and immunity? Because if we have bad sewage treatment, it can lead to different kind of diseases such as cholera or the water we are consu consuming, it's unhealthy. Okay, so the soil and grass cover the rubbish, you can see, and then water is pumped out so it's, that it's treated, so that it's safe to release into the environment. So the waste is compacted so it takes up less space 
and the pipes allow to maintain to be collected and used at field. So it's all of our ejection and our urine are being processed into sewage treatment. And then the waterproof liner prevents pollutants escaping the soil. Okay. Alright, we are going into the immune system where we start to talk about the, the cells. How does the cell is going to be a, another type of barrier in our body defenses? So different lymphocytes produces different antibodies. And the antibody is a protein that has a complementary shape to a specific antigen. So if you see like the current COVID-19 virus where it looks like a sphere shape and then on the top it has spikes, those are antigens. They are proteins basically, okay? So antibodies lock onto antigens or they and then or they mark to allow the to allow the destruction happen by phagocytosis. And lymphocytes that recognize a specific antigen will clone more of itself. And the process of nuclear division or cell division is called mitosis. Okay? Which takes time. So remember the word mitosis. It's, it's a process of where the cells or the antibodies divide and divide even more. Okay? Cell division. Okay. Remember in red blood, uh, in transport in animals, we talk about blood, the two types of white blood cells, which are lymphocytes and phagocytes. This is a lymphocyte, but there are some additional information to know right now. So a lymphocyte comes into contact with antigens that fit into the shape of the antibodies it can make. So the, the, the lymphocyte divides the form to make identical cells. After that, the lymphocyte secretes antibodies. So the antibodies are bind to the antigens of the virus and they kill them. That is how lymphocyte works. It kind of works like phagocytes but it's different because lymphocyte is the one that produces antibodies. Phagocytosis. Phagocyte cells does phagocytosis. So a phagocyte is moved towards a group of bacteria and flows around them. And the bacteria is maybe marked, marked, huh? maybe marked by an antibody. The phagocyte cell membrane fuses together and closing the bacteria in a vacuole. And then the enzymes inside the phagocyte cells will secrete enzyme to start engulfing the bacteria or digest it. And the soluble substance diffuses from the vacuole into the phagocyte cytoplasm. So during exam, never say the phagocyte eats the... <laughs> eats the bacteria or eats the pathogen. No, never use the word eat. It's both different things. For this case, you should be using engulf. All right. Next one, we're entering vaccination. Okay, so vaccination is a treatment where a vaccine is to produce an immunity against a disease. So the harmless pathogen given which has antigens. Antigens to trigger an immune response by lymphocytes which produce antibodies from what how lymphocyte cells produces antibodies to mark pathogens. And memory cells, which we're going to talk about later, are produced that give long-term immunity. So let's talk about what is a vaccine. So it's a biological preparation that improves immunity to a particular disease. A vaccine typically contains an agent that resembles a disease-causing microorganism but it's often weakened or killed from forms of microbes. How do you know whether it's weak if the toxins have been removed during the manufacturing process? Okay, It's just removing the surface of the virus antigens. Okay, They are killing the toxins. So that's why when we are injected with the vaccine, we are not infected by it. Okay. So this is how it works, okay? Whenever we have our first vaccination, we are technically infecting to this virus, but it is not going to affect you. That is your first infection. If from this graph, it's where a first infection with a particular type of bacteria, we can take in COVID-19 to see. So the first time, it shows that how the bacteria is kind of dominating the body itself. Okay. Then it swoops down because as time comes, 
your body produces more antibodies which helps to kill the bacteria inside our body. The second infection when we get it, our antibodies are already there because our memory cells already help them. That's why whenever we get the bacteria, we somehow we recovered fast because we already had the immunity inside. Okay. Explain the role of vaccination in controlling the spread of diseases. So firstly, it will be reducing the risk of infection. And secondly, is to reduce the rate of transmission. Okay. Now there are two types of immunity that you have to know in the syllabus, okay, which is active immunity and passive immunity. So active immunity is basically vaccination. So where immunity is developed after contacting pathogens inside the body, it can be from an infection or injecting a live or dead pathogen. And passive immunity is just antibodies or something like antibiotics, okay? So immunity is provided by antibodies from outside the body. So it can be antibodies from a mother's in the breast milk or across the placenta during pregnancy. And the next one is by injection of antibodies through your arms, the same way as how you're injecting a live pathogen, okay? Okay, active and passive immunity, they both have differences. How do we know the differences? Okay, active immunity, means that the individual has responded to an antigen that produced its own antibodies. So the lymphocytes are activated and the memory cells are formed and then they multiply so that to give a long-lasting resistance and it's long-term. Okay? In passive immunity, it, the individual is just given antibodies to produce by someone else and in short-term, no memory cells are going to be produced from passive immunity. Okay. Memory cells, okay. We know memory cells are take a huge impact in our immunity in our body. So memory cells are a type of white blood cell that can respond extremely quick when it meets a microorganism for a second time. They produce the right antibody for the particular microorganism and destroy it before you feel unwell. Okay, this is described as being immune to a disease. Here is a clear image on how do we know the difference between active immunity and passive immunity. So we know that active immunity is exposure to the antigen or a dead pathogen injection. And memory cells are produced. The immunity takes time to develop. It can be weeks and it has long-term immunity and it has a rapid immune response for the second infection you get of that particular bacteria. For passive immunity, it's different is where you get antibodies from breast milk or any sort of medication and no memory cells are being produced at that stage and immunity develops immediately okay and you have the downside of it is that you have short-term immunity and whenever you have got the second infection there will be zero immune response in your body okay lastly we have to know about autoimmune diseases so mistakes normal tissue for non-self and begins to attack the issue and attempt to the body to destroy it. This is basically what we call in gaming friendly fire. Okay? So it's when the cells are like um it's like when they want to destroy something but they have to attack the tissue inside your body in order to kill it. Okay? So autoimmune diseases arise from an abnormal immuno response, immunity response basically, of the body against substances and tissues normally present in the body, which is autoimmunity. The role of the immune system is to keep the body healthy by destroying which is perceived to be non-self, foreign particles basically. Okay. Next one, we're going to talk about specific autoimmune disease, which is type 1 diabetes. Type 1 diabetes is result from the destruction of an insulin-producing pancreatic beta cells by a beta cell-specific autoimmune process. So, this is just one example that in autoimmune diseases, type 1 diabetes is one of them. Okay, that's all. So that is all for um, this topic. So disease and immunity is really easy to understand and you just have to know what are the autoimmune diseases and then active and passive immunity. You know what's know about the roles of vaccination and also how bacteria helps the immune system to defend your body through foreign particles. 
and you must also remember phagocytosis and lymphocytes how they produce antibodies so thanks for listening to this video and then i hope you learned something new today and you you recap yourself from class and see you next time for the next video bye bye